Senate Deputy Minority and the Federal Government is providing more information on the persons and organizations said to be financing terror in Nigeria. Our Governor Zulu Mobrani said has warned on the sophistication of ISWAP Group. And Senate Deputy Minority Leader and Senator Bocha of the PDP today dumped his party to join the APC. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Let's begin by letting you know that three days ago, the National Assembly re-amended, passed, and again transmitted the electoral bill to President Muhammad Buhari for his assent. This comes after his force rejected it, but he told China's television that he will sign the bill should the National Assembly fix all the gray areas he pointed out to them. And so the nation now awaits the president's assent and hoping that he will keep to his promises or promise of signing the bill. Three days and we'll begin to count. It's from Ocean State. Tonight, we'll begin some of the stories we have for you on this program. Ocean State in Southwest Nigeria, where politics appear to have turned, uh, turned sour and perhaps a bit unfriendly. Today, the political campaign office of the Minister of Interior and the former governor of Oshun State, Mr. Rauf Arabiashala, has been attacked by gunmen. It happened this evening. And you can see there on the images on your screen some of the gunshot marks on the wall. The three story building along the Oshogugmogon Road is a political campaign house of the minister, also known as Onomio House. Political clash is even rife in the state following the sharp division in the different camps of the APC in the state. One camp loyal to governor uh, of uh, the, the governor of the state, uh, while the others loyal to the Minister of Interior and former governor, Raul Farag Bechola. Meanwhile, Oshun governorship primary election is slated for the 5th of March 2022, while the governorship election has been fixed for the 16th of July 2022. Let's tell you that there have been visits to the president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, at the presidential villa in Abuja. One of them is a former Imo state governor who recently declared to run for president in 2023. After meeting with the president, Senator Rochas of has asked President Buhari to call the EFCC to order, appealing to the president to intervene by stopping the EFCC from, according to him, the constant harassment and intimidation over allegations of a 2.9 billion naira fraud. Take a listen to the senator. I have to inform Mr. President that EFCC should be meant to obey the law that established them. And without the law, there would have been an EFCC. And the discretion with which they go about any affair that concerns me should stop. And I reminded Mr. President that I recall that some time ago, the EFCC had claimed that they recovered the sum of 5.9 billion from my account, which the court found out to be untrue. On that basis, the court ruled and ordered that they should not any further, more, uh, interrogate and harass me. This has also not been obeyed. The court ordered the EFCC to release my international passport. EFCC have refused to obey. The court gave damages to me for the sum of 500 million naira for EFCC to pay, EFCC have not paid that. Rather than doing that, on the day of my declaration, EFCC went on the press to announce that I'm being prosecuted for some criminal charges of 2.9 billion and no more than 5.9 billion. So I said, as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and one that stands on the side of law, that he should bring this attention to the EFCC. And despite the effort by the Office of the Attorney General to make the EFCC reasons and obey court judgment to release my travel documents and stop the harassment, the EFCC have refused. So I think there's some kind of expression on the side of EFCC. And I don't know who might be causing this, but it is appropriate that I do let them know of the injustice that is going on 
with me as regards the EFCC. Senator Rochas Okorocha will de recently declare to run for president after his visit to President Buhari today. Well, APC has a new member, and it's just not a, an ordinary member. He's a leader of the PDP in the Senate. How did that happen just a few months before election? We have the man in question right here in this studio. But before we unveil that conversation, Let's tell you about some of your political roundup stars. The House of Representatives today failed to sit as the Speaker, Femi Bajabiamila, angrily adjourned the plenary of a non-provision of the order liberty. paper. Knows that. The order paper is a program schedule that dictates the proceedings of plenary. Before adjourning, the speaker berated the clerk of the house for being absent when he arrived. The house adjourns to Tuesday. The chamber arrived for the day's plenary session at about 11.20 a.m. to a scanty chamber. According to the Minister of Information and Culture, the analysis by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit for 2020 to 2021 reveals that 96 financiers of terrorism in Nigeria have been identified, 424 associates and supporters of the financiers, 123 companies and 33 BDC's businesses all involved in terrorism financing in the country. Not really impressed or moved. He was speaking at the first briefing of the Ministry for 2022 on the administration's fight against corruption, which it held at a radio house in Abuja. According to the minister, 26 suspected bandits and kidnappers were also identified. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mr. Zainab Ahmed, has announced that as of November 2021, a total of 3.4 trillion has been spent on capital expenditure representing over 74 percent performance when compared to the total capital budget of over 4.5 trillion naira. This is just as the ministries of the Federal Capital Territory, Works and Housing, and Niger Delta shared the 250 billion naira Sukuk funds raised in December 2021 by the Debt Management Office. The finance minister, who was speaking in Abuja as a symbolic presentation of Sukuk checks to the beneficiary ministries, explains that the latest 250 billion naira sukuk will be released as part of the capital expenditure in the 2021 Appropriation Act, which has been extended by the National Assembly to March 31st, 2022. The Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room is asking President Mohamedou Buhari to thoroughly scrutinize nominees for appointment into the Independent National Electoral Commission in order not to undermine the Commission's effort to deliver credible elections in 2023. According to the group, the need for credible personnel at the Independent National Electoral Commission becomes expedient as over 20 resident electoral commissioners are due to retire from service in August this year. The group also calls on the President to urgently assent to the 2021 Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which has been retransmitted to President Buhari by the National Assembly. And that is why we are asking the president to look seriously at those that have been elected or been nominated. A faction of the All Progressives Congress, APC, who are opposed to the recent development in the party, has drawn the attention of the national leadership of the party to curtail the activities of who they describe as hatchetmen in the party against the well-meaning members of the APC in the state. In a press conference in Oka, the caretaker secretary, Mr. Chukuma Agufugo, discloses the history of the crisis is traced to the botched June 26, 2021 governorship primary of the APC, which led to the worst electoral outing of the party in Anambra State since its inception. The Kano State Governor on Tuesday, 1st of February 2022, received the CBN Governor in his office at the Government House. Some of the dignitaries present were the Jigawa State Governor, Mohamed Badaru, and Kebi State Governor Atiku Bagudu. The Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile was in Kano on an official working visit to open the Garawa Rice Company in Gudunwawa community on the Gazawa local government area in Kano.
And there you are. You've been served of your political round of stories. So let's begin. Uh, but let's tell you that it appears the May Mala Boni led Kiataka Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the All Progressives Congress APC is now taking a planned national convention of the party with kit gloves. This is because the party seems to have officially notified the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, of its decision to hold the convention on the 26th of February 2022 and the APC as till Saturday, February the 5th, to submit its notification. According to a letter made available to China Television entitled Notice for the Conduct of National Convention and signed by the Chairman Mela Malabuni and the National Secretary John Akpan Uduadeya, the CECPC notified the electoral body of its decision to hold the convention on the said date. And to one of our discussions for tonight, Senate Deputy Minority Leader. Senator Borcha has dumped the People's Democratic Party PDP and has now defected to the All Progressive Congress APC. Senator Borcha, who represents Taraba South, was formally received into the ruling APC by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House in Abuja. He was led to the presidential villa by the chairman of the APC National Interim Committee, Governor Me Mala Boni of Yobe State. This is what the president, uh, well, the president received him. But let me allow you to listen to Governor Boni of uh, Yobe State on uh, the reasons why Senator Borcher left the PDP. We just uh, brought in our newest member of the party, the Old Progressives Congress, the person of uh, Senator Emmanuel Borcher, uh, for Mr. President to formally receive him into the party. And that is what we have just done. All right. So, but why did the senator move? So, understand this. In the National Assembly, there is a majority and there is a minority. The minority is a voice of opposition in the National Assembly, whether in the Senate or in the House. And so, uh, when all of these things are happening, you look at the hierarchy. There is seniority in the National Assembly, of course. So, a deputy minority leader is a second in command in terms of hierarchy for all of the minority members in the National Assembly. For a deputy minority leader to leave the ruling, uh, the minority or the oppo main opposition party, there seems to be something wrong. Let me allow you to quickly li uh, listen to Senator Borcher of what he said at that uh, reception at the villa. Yeah, I'm calling on all and sundry to join forces together so that we can build a better Taraba, where governance will be seen as the hope of the people, and where development of infrastructure will be a key priority. Basically, that is my mission statement. So you have heard the man. He's crossed the carpet. Well, that's the language that you often use when people defect in the National Assembly or in the Parliament. Senator Emmanuel Borcher, uh, well, as of this evening, he may not retain that seat as a deputy minority leader since he's now in the uh, majority party in the National Assembly. <laughs> Senator, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sion, Is it correct to me. say that you're a former deputy minority leader? Profoundly You're so. not more a minority uh, no, member. I, yeah, I was a deputy minority leader. You've been in the PDP all your political career in the National Assembly, isn't it? I actually, I'm a founding member of the PDP uh, from the days of SDP 1992, the progressive movement. Through the break in formations of parties, I, I, I was a state secretary of uh, General Yaradua's famous political machine, the People's Democratic Movement. I was a state secretary in Taraba in 1994, and I came into the UNCP, who were also the founding members, and participated in the formation of the PDP at its onset. If you are one of those who birth the PDP, why are you dumping that party now? Uh, thank you. This question is quite novel and it answers the entire uh, question surrounding my defection. 
you know, uh, Achebe said that if you see a thought running in the daytime, it's not for nothing. There must be something after it life. The PDP that we had from the beginning, from the days of Solomon Lyle, is not the PDP that I saw in the past four years. And as I speak, I will say the PDP as a party didn't offend me, but the leadership of the party in my state. And why I'm saying this is for the world to know, because when you see defections, a lot of people may begin to wonder, oh, is this one, her? What, is, what is wrong with this man? That is, what is his problem? You will listen to the other side of the story. Now, as a member of NEC, of PDP, as a sitting senator and a principal officer, like you said, a deputy minority leader. I don't know who is my ward chairman in the party. Why? Is he... Deliberate on? isolation. From who? From the governor. So you and the governor, you have not been on good terms. Circumstances, processes preceding the 2019 elections are well known in my state. A lot of people expected me to have left the party. I had to be peaceful and apply my heart to wisdom so that I shouldn't be seen as if I were being ungrateful to a party that had been a platform that have all along climbed to a governance or position of power. Myself and the governor, do I say it's a quarrel per se? No, not from my part, actually. I actually cannot point out exactly what is his problem with me. But if I want to launch a project like the normal constituency project we do, if you're in public office, as in serving in the state government, you are barred from attending such functions. And most how, of the time... How long has this been happening? Shortly before the 2019 election. Mm -hmm. He came on 2015, we worked together. Suddenly this hit came in. Probably... I don't know. Sometimes I try to speak to him about issues that should be handled in the way and manner that our people will be happy. And quite a couple of times people have said, I should not be too straight. The people in power don't like it. Well, as a believer, I think the best thing is to talk, speak straight to a leader with due respect in a courteous manner. I've done all this. And I've discovered it has always earned me hate. So, from the governor? From so the governor. You, and you've had this conversation with him? You've asked him, why is this kind of hate coming? I have tried to see him at a point he shut his doors to me. Have you spoken to any of the leaders of the party at a national level? For example, yeah, they, Senator Ayu. I met Senator Ayu when he came. I'm talking even of... Secondus, when Secondus was there. Secondus is very familiar with the problem. He didn't help matters. I'm sorry to say this. He contributed because he was not assertive. Now, remember every politics is local. If the environment is not conducive, if there is no latitude for you to operate, you have a right to choose an alternative latitude or platform where you can operate freely. Because I have been in this party, like I said, I have been a very loyal party member. When the governor came, we put us together to work for him to ensure that he wins. And this sudden head, where it came from, I cannot decipher. But I didn't want to be seen joining issues with him because it's against our tradition. He is like an older brother to me. In the part of this country where I come from, we don't disrespect elders. Yes. So could this be linked to your governorship ambition? Well, I have not made public declaration about being the governor. Well, there has been innuendos, insinuations. People have also you know, been putting pressure on me to run for governorship. And I overheard somebody say that the only condition for me to sit with him is if I would drop my gubernatorial ambition. I said, well, I have not even made public declaration. If he wants me to sit, we talk peace, fine, I'm prepared for it. But 
tying it up to a condition makes it look ridiculous because power is given by God, not man. So, I mean, this could, uh, in, in essence, we could deduce that this is about your ambition for your supposed governorship ambition for 2023. I think it's beyond that because before the 2019 elections, the talks of governorship, gubernatorial ambition had not been on the table. It was about my coming to the Senate. And everybody around my environment knows that the governor did everything possible to ensure that I didn't come to the Senate. This is a common knowledge in the state and in my senatorial district. Of course, as a politician, you understand a leader's body language. If you are commissioner of finance, come to run election with me, contest with me in the primary election, and loses the election and goes back, you readmit him. And then you finance another person in another party to contest against me. Do I need a prophet to tell me that? So all these, need... these allegations? These are things that happen that is known to major key players in the state. And you are very aggrieved about it and you bottled it up to this moment? I kept, I thought it was all gone. But I realized that I needed a briefing space. Yes. Uh, and you imagine that the APC is a good vehicle for you to win an election in 2023? Well, it's not about winning the election. It's about having an atmosphere where you can operate freely as a politician, where you are not being persecuted, where you are given a latitude to operate, a free playing ground. You understand what I mean? It mustn't be contesting the election all the time. So this is not about your people. I mean, you don't have any problem with your people. My people, the, problem let me is tell you, let government. me tell you, Shion, let me tell you, Shion, my people who voted me here had wanted for long for me to leave the PDP because the persecution was so apparent, was so glaring, was so manifest. So I had to stomach this because I needed not to behave as if I were being ambitious. So this is not about whether the party is divided or your people don't want you. The, my people, it's about you and Governor Ishako. That is true. That is what is happening. That is true. My people are not in support of such persecution. They see me going through persecution that they felt it was unnecessary for me. Okay, so but Senator, I mean, because you're a lawmaker, yes. let me draw your mind to what the law says. I mean, you know what the law says about defection, section 68. I know, I'm going to come to that. I know about it. If there's, now, from Are the you, story I've told you, listen yeah. to me, from so, the story I've told you, mm -hmm. don't you deduce that there is a division in the party. I, I just listen, asked you, just no, a moment, I, Senator. I, I, listen, I, I understand. Just I a agree. moment, yeah. I asked you, I said, this is not about the division in your party. You said, no. No. You said, it's about you it's, and the governor. Let, let me come about that. The division between me and the governor has given birth to the situation we have at hand. If I told you earlier on that as a sitting member of the Senate, I don't know who is my ward chairman. Is that correct? Did I say that? You said so. Yes, I said so. So if I don't know who is my ward chairman and a member of NEC, and you want me to believe in any leadership that came out of a Congress that I was not part of, is that not division or is there another name for it? But that is something you have to prove to the, to the court. Absolutely. And you are not afraid of a possibility of you, of you losing your seat because the section 868 is very clear that when a lawmaker defects or leaves his political party that gives him or her that a is seat, if there is it has an to be vacated. Position. But there is a proviso that if there is a clear, sharp division in the political party, but this is not about your party that has a crisis, it's yes. about your own problem with the governor. It's, it's about, a personal it's, issue. It's, no, it's a crisis between me and the party at the level of the state. I am in disagreement the governor, with the listen, The governor listen is me. not a party. No, the governor is an the, the governor is the leader of the party in the state. But he's not the part of, of the structure of no, the party. No, 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 no. Listen to me. The governor is the leader of the party in the state. If the governor says... Ideologically, Senator. Yes. Structurally, the governor is not part of the structure of the party. The governor is a governor, the a, governor, political, listen, listen a political leader, we know but we, not listen, an administrative leader of listen, a party. Listen to me, Sean. I understand where you are going. There is nowhere in this state 
where the governor is not the leader of the party. And mostly the governor chooses his cronies to serve as leaders in the party. And if he goes to choose such cronies, they are the people that will act as his man Friday. And what he wants is what they're going to do. That is where if you are going to stay in an environment where you will not survive, if you remain there, you are doing it at your own peril. And I will not be part of such uh, danger. I will, not be, I will not endanger my political future in an environment wherein I am not guaranteed a clear future. So let's look at it. Yes. Um, you plan to run for governor. I have Is not that... made... Listen, Sharon. No, no, I'm I asking. Don't, no, no, I don't no, I'm want asking. you to put no, waste in my mouth. Plan. I don't <laughs> want you to put waste in my no, mouth. No, no, I'm not putting you. I am, I I'm am putting it to you. As I could, maker, listen to me. Which I you could, guys I, always I could run. Fly. I could run for Senate. I could run for governor. I could run for president. All these things are on the but table. But do you wish I to be governor choose, I could also choose not to run. Do you wish to be governor of Taraba State? All these things are on the table. Did you discuss it with the president? No. What took me to the president is to let him know that I'm joining his party. It's too early to begin to discuss my ambition at this Have level. you transmitted an official letter to the Senate, officially, official letter to be read on the floor? It is my decision to take. I am going to announce that on the floor of the Senate. Okay. Yes, and I've, you are going I've, to listen to it. Have you informed me? Uh, except friend? if you want to show me the process <laughs> no. that I will adopt. You've been in the National Assembly for some time, so you know better. By the grace of so, God. but the question is, have you informed your very good friend, Enyinaya Abaribe? Enyinaya Abaribe has acted on this matter, tried to intervene for a long time without any result. None of my colleagues doesn't know my trivials. All my colleagues in the Senate caucus all of them. In fact, a lot of them sympathize with me because I have been, I have been keeping this within me. It's, it's, it's so overdue that I had to... On, 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 on a lighter side, uh, some mm -hmm. people say uh, when there is crisis or uh, some kind of fracas between people, they oh, hope you are not owing some money. Hope you are not owing your governor some money. That's the reason why he, he doesn't like your face, like you've described. But that's your, I, a, I, that's, that's, a, that's I, an aside. Yeah, nothing, nothing like that. Nothing like nothing that. Near you money don't think that you owe him anything. You don't no, think that I, there is anything that you have done intentionally or unintentionally. Nothing, nothing. The governor had enjoyed my loyalty. We, I screened him. We screened him in 2013. Oh, there about when he came on board, I think 2012, as a minister. So it was when we disqualified the other minister that couldn't scale through that we screened him. In fact, quite a number of people are even joking about him. I said that, well, if you had known, you would have just allowed the other minister, because that man wouldn't have been as troublesome as this. Do you regret that? Well, I, I have no reason to regret, because it was not my decision alone. It was a decision of the government of the day and my colleagues in the Senate. Okay. Yes. On a final note, should you decide to run for governor, uh, perhaps one of the things that some of your constituents, members, would have thought, would have discussed with the president, is some of the challenges that you have faced, your people are facing. Part is the issue of insecurity. And you have some international disputes also in some part of the bodies of your constituent unit. And the question is, if, should you decide to be governor, how do you hope to tame this insecurity problem? Well, that brings us to the question of uh, aligning with the government at the center. Because we know the architecture as it stands today. You need a synergy, a workable synergy, effective synergy with the military, with the police. Largely the military that are supposed to protect our in territorial uh, integrity. That synergy can only work if you have a leader that is proactive. If you have a leader that is up and doing. It is in this process that you will be able to check such uh, occurrence of attacks left, right and center. So what we are seeing today is something that could be handled at the initiative of leaders who are in the corridor. Not necessarily, but when we hit blends on one individual, governance doesn't really work like that. Mm. It's a, a, a tripartite thing, or kind of a thing. All right. Yes. Senator, yes. I, 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 we're closing now. Uh, as a minority, 
leader in the Senate. You were one of those who strongly criticized the PPC government. It's interesting now that you have now joined them. Some, anything has changed? I, well, in instances of criticism, as an opposition, you are expected to be critical of government of the day. And remember I told you that every politics is local. Are you following? Mm -hmm. I could have joined any other party. What about listen, the politics listen to of me. ideology? Listen, that listen you to me now. Tell me, the question tell me which how political party. About tell me now, has anything changed? Tell me which political party in Nigeria. This is what all of us are in agreement with: that no political party is premised on a strong ideological foundation. Not that, even the APC. You have no, not joined. Listen to me. Listen to me. You find that the same people you see in PDP. At the same you see in APC, they cross all over and about. Are you following? This is a common denominator. So what we are trying to build as a nation is a political party that will stand the test of time, abiding by ideological principles. All right. Now, if that is lacking, it makes it, and I'm speaking as somebody who has never changed political party. The reason, and I will tell you why I choose the APC, there, is, there are two projects in my senatorial district that has gladdened the people's heart. The, the bridge across River Ibi, which had been awarded by the mm. president, which is a problem that had been lingering on since the colonial days. Right from the days of Sardana, mm. our people had wished that that bridge we need to had be been senator. constructed. Yeah, we need uh -huh. to and then the Kashimbila Dam. Right. These two projects encourage my people to Give me that backing mm -hmm. to change that. I, if, I'm, if you are changing political party, go to APC All so right. that they can finish Senator, this we need to go. Yeah. But nothing is changing your mind to go back to the PDP? No. In any time soon? No, no. Mm -hmm. I, have, I told you that the PDP as a national party, I'm not, I have no quarrel with the PDP. I'm quarreling with the so, PDP at my so state changes, because it's fashionable. If something changes in, in my state, state, you could go back to the PDP. What will change there? <laughs> what the will governor change? will soon go. He will soon spend... It finishes their two time. Well, it's left for the people to decide. Senator Emmanuel Bocha, mm. now former deputy, deputy manager leader. leader. Thank now you, a sure. floor member, isn't it? Yes. A floor member. A, thank, a floor ranking member. Ranking member. Mm. <laughs> thank you so a much. A backbencher. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, let's take a break, everyone. And when we return, we now turn our attention to security. My guests tonight are going to be dissecting the issue. Mr. Mike Ejofo and Emmanuel Ejuku, both of them are security experts. We're going to be dissecting the issues of the list of those funding terror and, of course, what Governor Zulum said today about ISWAP and the activities in the northeastern region of the country. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. We turn our attention to security. The Borano State Governor, Professor Bamba Ghana Zulum, today warned against the activities of terrorists in the Northeast. He said, and I quote, don't allow ISWAP to grow. They are more educated and sophisticated and will be a threat to the entire nation. That is the governor of Borno State talking earlier today. The governor disclosed all these today at a weekly ministerial briefing in the State House. Take a listen to Governor Zulum. I think this is an early warning system. We shouldn't allow ISWAP to grow. ISWAP are more sophisticated, they are well pondered, they are, better, they are more educated. And we shall do everything possible to defeat ISWAP. Otherwise, what Boko Haram did would be a child flare. This is an early warning system. Nigerian army has to re strategize and defeat ISWAP. ISWAP will be a threat to the entire nation. Because of the fragility of the Sub-Saharan Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, they are coming from Libya and others, resettling there. I say it time without numbers, that there is a need for the government of Nigeria to look, to rethink and look into the possibility of hiring mercenaries. Governor Zulum there, um, uh, if, you, if you listen well, uh, I mean, try to dissect the letters of his speech there, you will know that we're faced with some challenges. And he's given some solutions on the way out of this, which we'll dissect in a moment. 
Meanwhile, the federal government says it has uncovered 96 financiers of terrorism across the country, especially those back in Boko Haram and the Islamic State of West Africa province, Iswap. This was disclosed by Minister of Information and Culture, Alajilai Mohammed, during a press conference on the administration's fight against corruption in Abuja. Take a listen to the Minister of Information. Yes. The analysis by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFID, in 2021, revealed 96 financiers of terrorism in Nigeria, 424 associate supporters of the financiers, the involvement of 123 companies and 33 broad chains in addition to identifying 26 suspected bandits, kidnappers, and seven co-conspirators. The analysis has resulted in the arrest of 45 suspects who will soon face prosecution and seizure of assets. You heard the minister. We're going to go into a deeper part of what the minister said. So let's get some expert views on these issues. I'm now being joined by a former director at the State Security Service, the DSS. He was is now a vice president and alumni association of the National Institute of Security Studies, Mr. Mike Ejofo. And with him is a former commissioner of police, Mr. Emmanuel Ujuku. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you for Thank you. Having um, one thing we're glad in one's heart and it's a fact that when we're making progress. But when you hear the kind of warning coming from Governor Zulum, uh, it wasn't mincing words in any, any sense. And perhaps, let's glean from your uh, wealth of experience in intelligence, Mr. Ejiofo. What can you deduce from Governor Zulum that is perhaps most important for the nation to take note of? Yeah, the Governor Zulum, uh, as a matter of fact, is somebody I, I like to associate with because of his leadership qualities. He sees things and say them the way they are, not playing politics. The issue of his work in uh, the Sahel and uh, even the Northeast Chad and uh, is a very serious challenge. And uh, like he said, it should not be allowed to grow. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, I don't think government has even allowed it for any time to grow. But what he what is emphasizing is that the need for them to, for government to take more decisive steps to bring the activities of the ISWAP to under control. Recall that uh, ISWAP, you know, tried, unlike Boko Haram, even though they are violent, unlike Boko Haram, tries to uh, fill the uh, governance gap within the area, thereby winning the confidence of the, local, the locals in that place. They provide uh, uh, boreholes, uh, impose taxes, and, uh, and if this is allowed to continue, the likelihood of them uh, uh, establishing an alternative government is possible, undermining the government. So I completely associate with uh, Governor Zulum in his call that you should not be allowed to grow. Mm. But, and I'm going to come to the point that what happened with the American operation against the terrorists. In, and is there any relation, is there any correlation? Could, should we be happy with that kind of development if there is a, uh, an attack on the global uh, structure? Well, uh, this is not the first time uh, America is attacking the structure of ISIS, or ISIL, as the case may be. Our own ISWAP is aligned with them. They have a link. And what happens up there also affects what they're doing. But their financiers may be a little different. Now, these ones feed on the ungovernable space within the Sahel. They feed on it. Most of the states around us, nations around us, have a lot of issues, political issues, economic issues, and uh, issues of migration. A lot of free arms are available in these areas within the Sahel, which are close to Nigeria. 
So no matter what's happening with ISIL or ISIS in uh, Turkey, as you just mentioned, uh, as, um, I mean Syria, Syria, as you just mentioned, it may not have a, a major effect on the stability and the viability and the level of violence of ISWAP that we have that is operating close to our borders. We must pay special attention to that group. And just like the governor said, uh, it's, um, the thing is beyond, uh, it's not something we should play with kid gloves. With the kind of injury and perhaps the death of one of the leaders of Boko Haram that we saw, um, the, what the governor was saying here looks so much that we may have decimated Boko Haram in some ways, but ISWAP is one uh, entity that we need to pay more attention to. Do you have the same fear that the, government, uh, the, the governor has? And specifically on the point that the military need to change strategy. Yes, uh, I don't think uh, the military approach, the kinetic approach alone, will solve the problem. Don't also forget that uh, uh, ISWAP is an affiliate of uh, ISIS, a breakaway faction of uh, Boko Haram. So the, the operations of Boko Haram and uh, uh, ISWAP are slightly, slightly different. They, they try to win the confidence of the locals. So that's the point I was making earlier, that uh, government should concentrate on the locals, make them feel, feel that governance gap you know, by providing social amenities, which the ISIS yeah, this swap is not provided just like the ISIS is doing. And if they have the confidence of the locals, they undermine government, they gladly pay tax to, to, to ISWAP, and uh, they operate freely. So the governor's concern is very, very much in line. And uh, I think uh, government should attach, we cannot just go with uh, the issue of uh, military approach. Try to see, we are going to an election, you know, and. Uh, it's very difficult for us to conduct an election when these people are there, mm -hmm. having a government, a government space and taking a charge of the area. One area, I mean, for you are a security expert, and you perhaps you know more than a lot of us who are listening to you tonight, is a concept that we have the fighter jets that we just got from America. Fine, you said the kinetic form should not be the only way to fight these entities. But when we wonder, when you have the firepower, why don't we use it? The question is, the firepower we have, can it quell, can it tame these entities? Well, thank God the firepower is there now. But uh, I'm not sure it's sufficient. Uh, firepower alone cannot deliver the dividends. You still require actionable intelligence. You still require the cooperation of all and sundry. And uh, if, if the fighter jets are deployed, and as, the, as they are being deployed, they must be focused, they must go to a special target, and that target must be informed by intelligence. So that intelligence aspect also has to be beefed up so that these aircrafts can operate effectively and deliver the deadly weapons. Hmm. What's your take on that, Mr. Well, my take on that is, see, uh, not until recently, that when uh, this uh, group, uh, the bandits, were declared a Boko um, terrorist. terrorist group, that uh, we've seen the deployment of the Tukana aircraft. Prior to this, we've just been hearing Nigeria acquired the Tukano aircraft. Super Tukano aircraft. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for cutting such operations was because of human rights abuse mm. when the aircraft was being uh, purchased. They were, to, you remember the Lee? The uh, Lee. Lee, uh, yes. The Senator uh, Lee. The, uh, uh, where Nigeria was accused of uh, human, human rights, rights violations. Abuses and yeah. uh, which led to blacklisting. And we now start to recall that the previous government had to go through the black market to buy arms. So I think Nigeria was being careful and cautious in its approach. But now that we have, uh, uh, they have been declared. A terrorist group with this ISWAP. Of course, ISWAP has been, always been a, a terrorist group, mm. so we should be deployed. But my fear is uh, when you deploy just like that, we are going to have a lot of collateral damage. So it should be it should be work in a way. You know that ISWAP 
even though they are affiliated to, um, they operate some of them like the bandits, you will have to be very careful in uh, assessing such situations so that if they are moving out from their own environment, they can be attacked. But the, what about the use of drones? I mean, exactly. Which is supposed that's, to be that's part that's of intelligence gadgets where you are able to even make, uh, mount surveillance and be able to identify your target. I think that is supposed to be the norm, isn't it? Or don't we have it? Well, yeah, we, we do have. But you see, the, 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 at times I sit down privately and ask myself that question. Does it mean we don't have effective drones? Go to the Northwest, for instance. Mm -hmm. You see the activities of the bandits. Mm -hmm. Terrorists, I don't call them bandits. They, they operate freely. And I ask, before they come and uh, kidnap hundreds with motorbike, don't we have drones to locate them? Or it has gone like uh, the issue of uh, the cameras that were installed in uh, Abuja. Mm. That is not working. But, but correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm watching too much of sci-fi and too much of detective movies. Mm. <clears throat> we see a situation where remotely Americans carry out operations far away from their shores and they monitor with drones and see what is happening real time. And they are able to even give command from the from, uh, off site. I mean, off the site, and they give command. I thought that, are we that sophisticated? So talking about sophistication, you heard what the governor said, that these guys are sophisticated, that they have the, the, the monetary power. Do we have that sophistication? I, I don't you know go? about the sophistication of our military. Nigeria is a developing country, and many, all of us, everything is developing. So also our military firepower. Issue of drones that are mostly unmanned, that are unmanned, and um, there's need for collaboration with sister countries outside of Nigeria who have better equipment. I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, some of these countries, you mentioned, America and the rest of them, they have things that are more than drones, that are hanging in space. And the drones feed them. And then they feed back to some base stations. We need to collaborate with them. When some Americans were kidnapped somewhere in the Northeast, it didn't take them days. They picked the location, use of drones, use of high-powered intelligence equipment, and they were able to get it. Nigeria needs to collaborate with these groups, even within West Africa, within the African region, and outside. Wherever you can get help to solve a problem that is choking you, you get that help, and it's legitimate. Nigeria can afford it, and I think we should go for them. This information coming from the federal government, a lot of Nigerians have been asking, who are those financing terror? Now we know, we don't know names. We don't have the names because that is not captured in what the minister said today. He just told us that there are 96 financiers of terrorism in Nigeria, while 424 associates and supporters of the financiers were, have been also uncovered. I mean, we've asked the Minister of Justice to give names. Can, how much of help would this kind of information give? Well, uh, it's uh, like uh, Mr. Juku was saying. You remember that uh, the governor also called for support from other countries that uh, we should not be fighting this war alone. You know, he, he made that call. And I think government should also follow it. Like he, 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 the example he gave, the, the Americans came and operated door with uh, our security services to uh, neutralize uh, those kidnappers and freed Yes. So why don't we go for such a... Uh, also, in uh, 2015, before 2015, we know had mercenaries. He also called for uh, uh, mercenaries. And we still use that, make use of mercenaries of at this course. time? Why not? With the experience we had, we have What experience we have? We just have to. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue we have to look at uh, critically. You, on the, so when you talk the, about mercenaries, does it put a question mark on the capability of our own men? And no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. When they are coming, like the mercenaries, when they are coming, they are coming from foreign countries, they are coming with um, more sophisticated equipment. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that there's so much corruption. You agree with me? And uh, before the budget is released, how much is budgeted for? How much is released? Even that one released is shortchanged somewhere along the line. 
you have oversight function before you get they go and buy sub, uh, substandard equipment so the oversight does not even have any reason to question because they are compromised so that's a problem that information of 424 associates, 96 financiers of terror in Nigeria, how much of help with that information? I don't know what we want to do with that. Because informing Nigerians that there are 400 and something financiers of terrorism and you have not arrested them, to finance terrorism is a criminal offense. The laws are there. Activate the legal process, get them arrested. This is not the first time government both federal and states have told that they know the financiers of this and this. Could it be a but reason? But there's too there much action. Yeah, could there be a reason why it is they are trying to keep the, the names? Yeah, for political reasons, because some of their allies and uh, colleagues are involved. So they want to hide themselves. Because it's a group, it's like a court, court war. And there are disaster merchants, those who benefit from disaster. And some of whom may have compromised those who are even saying they know, they, they know, they know, they know. So there's a lot of compromise there. And as far as you're concerned, the government should come out with the names. But is that, is that we, don't, we don't need to hear the names. But could that Go help? Get them, get them arrested, prosecute them, put them behind bars. That's where they belong. How easy you is that? You can't allow somebody to be How causing easy is that? so more tension on Nigerians, so more hardship, keeping us down, killing our women, killing our boys, raping people, and that you're just saying you have their names. What are you with the names? That's not, that's not population census. How easy is it? I mean, if you say people are financing terror, how easy is it to, to prosecute them? It, it, it's not difficult. The government has come up with the names of uh, the financiers and the groups financing these groups. And they are in custody. So what we expect, I expect the Nigerian media, the journalists, you for instance, for a follow-up, these issues have been raised. Yes, we will clap for government that this thing has been done. Any follow-up. After two, three days, we forget about We all suffer from collective... We've had the Attorney General of the yeah. Federation on we three occasions on the program. Yes. And one of the reasons he gave is that this has to be meticulously done because there are investigations in all of this. That's a question I'm asking. You guys are the security expert, and that's the reason why I'm asking. How difficult is it to government, be able to, to get these people... Government go all out and prosecute these people to serve as this and At least, if we know some of them by names, you name them and... Uh, they are seen, they, they have brothers, they have uh, uh, relations, and that will serve as deterrent. On a final note, where do we go from here? The governor sound a note of warning, and the minister has spoken. I mean, it's coming on the same day, and we're going into an election period. From your own point of view, 30 seconds, what, what should we be looking at? What should the government be doing right now? Well, that's my greatest concern now. Time is not on our side. But government must do something to stabilize the security environment before the election. Mm. Mr. Ojuku, a lot more has to be done. Governor has said so, not just governor, there are others who are also privy to what he has just said. These things should be acted upon right now before they put the whole nation on fire. The now we, we can't even do census because of this. Now we, can't, we may not be able to do election. The president has said, in, he told the people in the Northeast that very soon, you will see some very drastic action. Maybe we should expect That's our those actions. That's prayer. our prayer. It gladdens my heart to hear that. I hope it works. Mr. Emmanuel Juku, thank you so much for coming. And thank Mr. You. Michael Jofo, it's good to hear your expert uh, opinions on this, these issues. Very informed ones too, and experienced ones. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.